adoption of Cardano projects beyond NFT projects by real bona fide users is something we can actually start caring about in 2022, since we'll finally have those types of projects up and running. The good news is that social media engagement for those projects over the course of 2021 is implying a very healthy growth curve where some large portion of these projects might all be able to grow together. Ready? Let's go. We're going to talk about social engagement for these projects over 2021, but first, Charles did a couple of videos over the holidays where he identified some things that sound like they're going to be pretty prominent parts of the Cardano 2022 agenda. Charles dropped this video on Christmas Eve. He seemed happy, energetic, and ready for 2022. Even Logan the Lobster there seemed to have some kind of high energy glint in his eye. I'm thinking somebody better check that mic stand and make sure it's not pregnant. But Charles threw around a number that we've heard enough times now I think we can put a little bit of credence in this number. He said that they know of 127 dApps writing code or attempting to write code to eventually deploy on Cardano. And later on in the video, he actually, you know, threw out, you know, the idea that some number of these are going to launch in the next couple of weeks. I think just based on the activity we've seen throughout the ecosystem, we know that some projects are going to be launching in the next month. It's going to be a really special time in Cardano, I think. He also said next year they're going to launch a formal open source project structure so that lots of institutions can be wired into cardano the three founding entities iog emergo and the cf will also transition over to the structure he talked about a lot of the projects we kind of know about input endorsers pipelining mithril hydra and he reiterated his prior comments about Cardano having been built for correctness. And now the time has finally come to optimize performance. Obviously, all of those projects will improve performance and experience on the Cardano network. They've also got more research papers coming down in 2022. Charles seems to be most excited, and this, this shouldn't be surprised to anybody who kind of follows what's going on in Cardano, but Charles seems to be most excited about the loan project in Kenya with Possession that we've talked about many, many times on the channel. He wants to get a real end-to-end -end microfinance transaction on Cardano by the end of 2022 with a real borrower in Africa, probably in Kenya, given that it's Possession, with a real digital identity and a real on-chain credit score. Uh, they'll use a stable coin on the borrower side and they'll settle on Cardano. Once this is on, he thinks that greed will compel people to fund these loans and that will drive down interest rates for the borrowers. I think this is probably right. I think if we want to find a way to provide capital for people in the developing world, the best way to do it is to appeal to the greed of people in the developed world. <laughs> Seems like no incentives work better than economic incentives. Altruism only goes so far, but economic incentives, greed, if you will, really, really motivate people. I mean, there's a reason everybody shows up to work in offices they hate every day. It's not because they love being somewhere they hate every day. It's the economic incentives. And I think Charles also dropped another video today as I record, specifically about dApps and the Cardano DeFi Alliance. You might have seen some announcements on Twitter about the Cardano DeFi Alliance. If you didn't, here it is. It shows, the website shows members, including Ardana, Liquid, Gerald Wallet, Charlie3, MinSwap, Indigo, SundaySwap, MLabs, and Optum. And as far as a mission, mission statement, we have this on the front page of the website. The Cardano DeFi Alliance, the CDA, is a consortium of products, projects with the primary mission of standardizing Plutus and Cardano best practices within the DeFi ecosystem. We aim to drive composability across DeFi protocols. The CDA offers a framework to Plutus protocol development teams who are focused on collaboration of key issues and their strategic development. This is the kind of thing that makes me love the Cardano ecosystem. So we've got all these projects and you know, eventually, I, I'm guessing that the membership of this group is just going to grow. And eventually there will even be, um, you know, I mean, even in this list right here, we've obviously got competing, competing DEXs and things like that. Um, there's going to be competing DeFi entities. 
but they all know that if they're part of this pro this uh, organization and they create an increased level of composability across Cardano DeFi protocols, it's going to be good for all of them. I love that they already realize that working together to do things like creating greater composability across across their their platforms is just going to make the entire Cardano DeFi scene stronger, and that's going to be good for everybody. Charles seems really excited to work with the CDA, and he says he's going to attend a meeting with them uh, sometime very early in 2022. I think he knows that they're probably going to get a lot of very good Cardano improvement proposal SIP ideas out of uh, a group like the CDA. He also said that DEXs are imminent. Speaking of Cardano DeFi, DEXs are imminent in the next few weeks. I wouldn't be surprised. So this Thursday, we'll get the Cardano 360 for December, if I remember correctly. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear some announcements about some mainnet launch dates for a DEX. Thinking we might hear <laughs> from one DEX in particular. I think a lot of people thought we were going to hear about a launch date um, at the mid-month update, and it sounds like uh, that was not in the cards. Possible we could hear about something this Thursday. Uh, that would be great news to finally have a big, big, anxiously awaited DEX launching on Cardano. Charles says they have hard fork combinator events ten tentatively scheduled for February. They have a hard fork combinator event tentatively scheduled for February that will introduce some Plutus enhancements. The next HFC event will be June. June will bring in a lot of Plutus improvements based on what they can learn from projects and groups like the CDA. I think in this first six months of Cardano DeFi actually running on mainnet in Cardano, it they're going to learn a lot. So Charles described a spectrum of activities from projects. And I've seen people talk about this a little bit, even in the, uh, the comments on this channel. So some projects are building out bespoke infrastructure and some are happy to use the Plutus application backend, which is kind of exactly what you'd hope for if you have a lot of developers who are excited to launch projects, create projects on the Cardano, uh, Cardano network, you would kind of want to see some projects who are willing to build out their own custom solutions. And you'd also want to see a, a bunch of projects who just want to use the default solution, which is the Plutus application backend. Charles also said, we may see Yella and EVM side chains on the test net in the first half of 2022. I've said it before, but I'm quite curious to see the extent to which we, we end up seeing Ethereum projects moving it over to Cardano versus our own homegrown organic Cardano projects. And I actually think it's kind of consistent with Charles' conception of the island, the pond, and the ocean, where the island is Cardano, the pond is Ethereum, and the ocean is the whole world of other developers who don't have anything to do with crypto right now. He, you know, in that in that sort of model, Ethereum developers are only a pond that sort of exists on Cardano Island. <laughs> so Charles also mentioned Mastering Cardano. You remember, this is the book that we're going to write about Cardano. Everybody who was in Bitcoin in the early days remembers that mastering Bitcoin was a thing. Apparently, the author they had lined up for mastering Cardano is quite ill, and they have to find a new author now. Charles also talked a lot about something that I think might satisfy the people who are always concerned about decentralization in Cardano. He seems very focused on creating a Linux-type ecosystem where hundreds or thousands of companies are working on Cardano instead of just the three custodians, IOG, Emergo, and the CF, and the something like 15 total companies who work on Cardano today. I think Charles' focus on this is partially a response to where he knows the goalposts are going to move next. First, it was hey, Cardano doesn't have smart contracts. And then it was like, Cardano seems to have smart contracts, but you know, we went through that whole evolution where it was like, there's a concurrency problem. And then that was kind of debunked. And now it's sort of like, yeah, but you still don't have any dApps up and running. Obviously, in the next couple of months, we're going to have a whole bunch of dApps, or at least it sounds like we're going to have a whole bunch of dApps. And the critics of Cardano, you know, largely, I think, maximalists of other chains, but even within Cardano, we see, you know, a certain amount of healthy criticism. The next thing, I think the possible place the goalposts are going to move to next is 
okay, yeah, maybe Cardano works great, but you're not decentralized because IOG is still in charge of too much of the development. And I think that's what Charles is explaining here. He's explaining here, hey, there are three custodial entities right now. There are maybe 15 companies that work on Cardano total, but we're going to move to a Linux type ecosystem where hundreds or thousands of companies are going to be working on Cardano. And the three custodians, the three founding entities of the Cardano ecosystem are going to give up control and let this flourish into a fully decentralized ecosystem. And Charles finished by saying that 2022 will be a huge year for Cardano that will be defined more by the ecosystem's labors than by IOGs. I think this is great. He already sees that the best thing for the ecosystem will be sort of this flourishing of different entities involved. Let's talk about some social media engagement data from some prominent Cardano projects, or about them anyways. First of all, let's not pretend like these numbers will impart any accurate information about how these platforms will actually run. Any of these projects could have done a great job garnering followers on Twitter and come out with a terrible platform, or vice versa. Maybe they did a terrible job uh, getting followers on Twitter. Maybe they'll come out with the very best platform for their specific use case. So these numbers don't tell us anything necessarily about what these platforms will actually be like once they're up and running, but I think they do tell us something. So this, these are just Twitter numbers. Just to keep it simple, I focused on one platform that's pretty prominent in the Cardano ecosystem, the social media world of the Cardano ecosystem, at least, and that's Twitter. We could have looked at a bunch of different social media platforms. We're just focused on Twitter here. So the y-axis, the vertical axis, is Twitter followers in thousands. The x-axis is the age of the Twitter account of each of these platforms. So obviously, if you just sort of popped up out of nowhere and you were kind of a stealth project and all of a sudden your Twitter profile appeared, you're probably not going to have as many followers as some project that's been around for 15 months. That seems to be the case with these particular uh, Twitter accounts. We've got Wing Riders over here, which I believe is the Vacuum Labs DeFi project at zero months. It, the Twitter account was started this month. Then we've got Muesli Swap, which is like three months old, right? And Wing Riders is at 1.6 thousand followers. Muesli Swap, three months old, is at 7.7. Genius Yield, you know, you probably know that one is the uh, the project that uh, Lars Bernius is the CTO of. It's five months old and has 12.2 thousand followers. And then we get over here in this seven, eight, and nine month sort of cluster. So the seven month cluster is. 8x Pro, Ardana, and Ergodex. And we get into some high, much higher numbers here. So Ergodex has 34.5 thousand followers. And obviously with, with a lot of these, you could say that the Ergodex Twitter account is sort of you know an associated account of the regular Ergo account, which has been around since like 2017 or something like that. So you know, this data is not perfect or anything like that. And there are a lot of other variables that aren't encompassed here. But again, you know, I think while this doesn't tell us any kind of a complete story about these projects, it tells us something. So at the seven month cluster, again, we've got Ergodex, we've got Ardana, and we've got 8x Pro. 8x Pro is at 50.2 thousand followers, Ardana is at 3.8, and Ergodex again is at 34.5. And I just sort of eyeballed these. I didn't really double check them. So I could be, I could have messed up any of these particular numbers, but hopefully I did a good enough job that we can kind of look at this and it tells us a little bit of a story. But definitely don't rely on these numbers. Double check them if you're trying to do anything serious with these with these numbers. So in the nine, in the eight month cl cluster, we've got Paribus. Maladex, Ray, and Vifi, and they sort of range from 10.8 thousand followers to 20.7 thousand followers. In the nine month cluster, we've got MinSwap at 34.5 thousand followers, and then we've got Occam, Cardax, and Meld at 46,000, 47,000, and 47,000. So we've kind of got these little groupings and we see quite a bit more different. Then we've got Liquid over here at 15 months and 47.7 thousand followers. Obviously Liquid is well known to the community going all the way back to the earliest iterations of Catalyst. So obviously you're probably saying to yourself, hey, there's a project missing here. That missing project was Sunday Swap. 
clear up here at eight months and 247.6 thousand followers. Sunday Swap has so many more followers in their projects. I actually had to exclude it so you could see the differentiation in the seven, eight, and nine month clusters down here. Obviously, Sunday Swap is on a completely different trajectory at eight months with almost a quarter million followers. And we do see some variation in these projects at seven, eight, and nine months in between, you know, 10,000 followers and 50,000 followers clear up here. But despite that, the fact that these projects aren't even more all over the place maybe can give us hope that the Cardano community has sort of broad interest in all of these projects. The story this tells me is that even pre-launch, if you're a Cardano DeFi project, even pre-launch after a short handful of months, you can find between 10 and 50,000 people who want to read everything you type on Twitter. That's not a bad place for an ecosystem to be for this many, this many projects all to be able to find that many people who have an appetite for consuming their content. It's interesting that with Cardano metaverses, even though it's too small a pool of projects to draw any sound conclusions, we sort of see the beginnings of a similar story. We have some brand new projects like one month old in both Ada Realm and Cardano Village over here at 4.96 thousand followers and 2.3 thousand followers. And then we see Artifact at four months and 8.8 thousand .8 followers, Cardano Apes at 14.6 thousand followers in eight months. And obviously that account has to do with uh, the Cardano Apes NFTs and the Metaverse. And then we see Cardani over here, again, a project that's had a lot of NFT things going on and that they have the developing Metaverse at 6.68 thousand followers. And then clear up here at four months, we see Pavia at 34.9 thousand followers, sort of in this similar position to Sunday Swap. So again, this is obviously way too few data points to really draw any kind of conclusion. Hopefully looking at these numbers against the actual age of the Twitter account adds a little context around these social engagement numbers for Cardano projects. I hope you're starting on a great week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.